what's going on everybody welcome to your sixth bootstrap tutorial i'm mehul and in this tutorial we'll be starting off with the project by creating a simple navigation bar with the help of bootstrap framework now to begin with first of all if you go to this example web page of getbootstrap.com slash examples slash navbar you see this nice little navbar which is kind of give you a dynamic feature of you know just switching over to different navigation bars and trying them out we also have a drop down here which looks kinda nice so to create your own let's view some navbar documentations so on this page right here you'll see some code now this code would exactly reproduce this thing right here but we will not be using this code exactly we will be simplifying this a lot so let me just go ahead and copy this code and paste inside this notepad file now don't worry because we will be going off one by one with each line and I guess I should you know teach you guys also as well what I'm doing side by side so this is our nav class navbar and nav by default now what happens is that with this nav tag what we are doing is we are creating a navigation bar and with HTML you know nav tag is an allowed tag now so this class of navbar and navbar default what it does is it says that this element would be a navigation bar and the styles are applied accordingly now we have another style which is for the dark theme and which has a different class than nav by default which we'll be looking very soon now the next thing we have is a diff class container fluid now I'll be explaining the difference between container and container fluid very soon in this tutorial only but first of all let me just get rid of um, this uh, unwanted code so I'm just gonna open this file in Chrome first of all and thereafter what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of the mobile versions right now because we'll just look at that later on and if you see okay this is the current link let's get rid of this and I guess a drop down wouldn't hurt and let's just get rid of the search bar as well and I guess we do have a drop down out there so this one isn't needed as well hmm okay so now the code looks much cleaner than before okay so now what's happening here is that this container fluid is basically creating your you a uh, responsive menu now by that what I mean is now without container as well the menu would be responsive but the difference is that fluid is like it's like flowing on the whole screen now you know that um, fluid kind of give look of you know flowing so this menu this navigation menu top menu is flowing 100% in width on all of your screen now if you remove this fluid then what will happen is that it would as, uh, attain a certain fixed width so you see now that this gets limited to a fixed width and you can even find that width that width is 1170 pixels now container fluid has a class uh, this class has a style with width of I guess hundred percent or no width set at all it's it just has some margin so it takes all of your screen now if you want if you are looking to create a full screen interface then I'll suggest you to go ahead with container fluid but in my case I guess container is good enough because you know it kinda makes your things compact now instead of this link what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add here home 
and some other sections as well about contact and what we can do for this drop down menu is I'm gonna just explain this in a second I'm just gonna change this to more okay so now what happens here is to create a drop down what you need to do is instead of just regular regular li you need to give it a class of drop down so that it is prepared to be a drop down now next what you need to do is you need to give it an a tag the text which you need to be clicked to you know show the drop down and the href is hash because we don't need the user to navigate anywhere else you can also give it here javascript void if you want to wouldn't hurt or whatever you want to then a class of drop down toggle now drop down toggle is required for I guess these styles you see that this becomes a deep um, colored when the drop down is active so that does the thing and data toggle drop down now this basically tells this bootstrap framework that this link would act as a drop down so make sure to include this line this line is kind of important now since data since data star any attribute is allowed in such a format so this attribute is perfectly valid even if it was data like that so you see then roll button I guess this is not required and area has pop-up true now it says that this contains a pop-up yes it does and area expanded false now by default it is not expanded so just keep it to false now the tag span class carrot what it does is it will create a small little this uh, icon if you see this triangle a little triangle and bootstrap by default contains a lot of icons as well in its framework so it's not just limited to this triangle but there are many other icons like the home icon or the user or many others which we will be using very soon on this project and you can use as well for your um, online websites now all of these allies are your um, links inside this drop down and as you can see this role separator what it does is it just creates a horizontal line so it kinda looks nice if you want to have separate sections inside drop down as well so here you go how that's how you create that and all of these links you can link them anywhere or you can just remove them as well if you wish so with that being said you can just edit your name here or you can just go ahead with an image as well wouldn't hurt so you see that it creates a nice little menu of your navigation bar kinda of your web page and uh, that kinda looks good so and that code didn't even require us to touch a single CSS file so far so that's a plus point of this bootstrap framework and in the next tutorial we'll be working on some more elements on the screen and that's it for now and I'll see you then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching